Hello, and welcome to Muse 84. My name is Tamova Adels Robinson, and I am a premium business consultant and coach. And today's quick class is called Do You Know Your Targets? And this class is all about identifying and getting to know your target market and target audience to create the proper content that you need to engage your consumers and turn that interest into sales, right? Many times you all are creating content and you're thinking the content's just not working. I'm not getting likes. I'm not getting engagement. I'm not even getting views. And most times that's because you have not identified your target market. You really have not gotten to the meat and potatoes of what your business is, who it's for, and why. In order to be successful with creating the right marketing materials, creating the right marketing strategies, and creating content that conveys the proper message to your target audience, you must know who your target audience is, right? So let's jump into it. Aha, the three W's. The three W's stand for what, who, and why. What your product or service is, who your product or service is for, and why. What problem are you solving for that target, target market, and what is the benefit to that market? Knowing the three W's is vital to your business. The three W's are the foundation of your business. It helps you to not only create proper content and marketing material, but it also helps you with investors and donors and just consumers in general. You must know your three W's. Again, your three W's are what your product or service is, who your product or service is for, and why. And the why is what problem are you solving for that target market and what is the benefit to that market? Take a few moments and just think about what your three W's are. Write them down because we're going to come back to them a little bit later and we're also going to be using them in um, additional trainings that we will be doing throughout the month. Although we are touching on these three W's, the main W that we are focusing on for this training is the who. This is your target market, your target audience, your target consumer. That is what we are going to focus on for this training because you have to know who you're dealing with, who you're selling to, in order to create content that speaks to them and piques their interest. Let's jump into the who a little bit more deeply. Your target market. What is a target market? A target market is a particular group of consumers at which a product or service is aimed. A target market is the group of consumers you plan to sell and or reach with your content and other marketing strategies. So your who, your target market, that's who you are selling to. It's, for, it's who your products and services are for. It's who you plan to reach with your content and other marketing strategies, which is why it is crucial that you understand, identify, and know your target market. Now that we've touched on target market, let's go into your target audience. They are similar, but not the same. Your target audience is a group within a target market that is being served advertisement. These are the consumers who are most likely to respond to your content and other marketing strategies. So your target audience is similar to your target market, but it is the group within that target market that is going to hear what you are saying, that is going to engage with you through your content and marketing strategies. Now, you are probably asking yourself, target audience, target market, why are they important to me? These things are important because you must know who you're speaking to. Who are you creating your content for? Who are you creating your commercials for? Who are you selling to? Who are you wanting to buy? You have to know these things in order to be successful in sales, in order to be successful in your business, right? You can't have a successful business if you don't know who your product or service is for, if you don't know who you're trying to speak to through your marketing. Many of you create wonderful content but because you don't know your target market and your target audience, you are spinning your tails with content that is not engaging, content that may pique interest to someone else, but not your target audience. So you must know your target audience and your target market before you begin creating marketing strategies and other content.
So now that we've covered target market and your target audience, let's build your target consumer profile. Your target consumer profile is a person who fits the profile of your idea customer and your target customer. Let's give this person a name and answer these questions. Who are your products or services for? Of course, give this person a name. You really need to dig deep when you're building your consumer profile. We wanted to make it as realistic as possible. What is this person like? What is this person's personality like? What is their daily life like? What is their income and lifestyle like? This is important for more than one reason. It's important so that you know how to better reach them do your, through your content, but also when you are pricing your products and your services, you need to know what that person's income and lifestyle is like so that you price accordingly. What are their spending habits? What is their age? Are they male or female? Where do they live geographically? How do they earn a living? Do they watch TV or do they read more? What type of television shows do they watch? Why are they in the market for what your business provides or why would they need what you are providing? What are they currently going through? Are they going through a crisis? Did they lose a loved one? Are they in a region that um, is in need of particular services or products and it's just not available in their area? What's going on in their life that they would need what you are providing? What problem does your product or service solve for this customer? This is the what in the three W's we, we spoke about earlier. How do they find what they need? Where do they go seeking solutions? Do they look on the internet? Do they do Google searches? Do they use word of mouth? How are they finding solutions to their problems? How do they choose or decide what to use for their particular needs or wants? Of course, you can answer more questions and tailor them to your particular consumer profile. This is just giving you an idea of how to build that consumer profile. Now let's go back a minute. When we speak about how do they find what they need, or where do they go seeking solutions, this is going to help you with what platforms you use to market. Your particular target customer may use Facebook, while some other ones may use Instagram. Maybe someone does not use social media and they prefer text engagement or email engagement. So when you're answering these questions, think about that as well. Now that we've gone through those lessons, let's put it all into play. Next are some examples. We are going to discuss some imaginary business owners and look at what type of consumer or customer profile these business owners will have. Example number one, meet boutique owner Diana. Diana opened a new online store selling clothing for the 40 and fabulous women who are looking for fabulous and stylish clothing and who do not want to shop the online boutiques that cater to the young partying crowd. She sells a variety of clothing, but her new product is her curvy 40 jeans. After engaging with consumers and doing some market research, Diana found that women over 40 did not have many options in regards to stylish jeans that fit just right. She also found that many curvy women over 40 ended up purchasing jeans designed for the younger consumer and did not fit quite right. The In comes curvy 40 jeans. Diana has done very well with this product and has marketed this product using creative content that speaks to her customers, curvy, stylish women over 40. In addition, when the women come to purchase the jeans, they are also shopping for additional clothing. Her creative, targeted content and marketing strategies drives traffic to her online boutique. The content she creates, creates, which is geared towards her target market and audience, makes them aware of her new jeans and makes them feel like her jeans are the jeans they must have at all costs. Let's take a look to see how she does this. On the next slide, we will look at this shop owner's three W's. Now let's get into the three W's of example number one. The what? What is the product? Curvy 40 jeans and of course, other clothing for the 40 and fabulous diva. The who? Curvy stylish women over 40 looking for the perfect, well-fitted pair of jeans. And now for the why. Well, there is a need for curvy 40 jeans because most of the jeans currently on the market are not designed for older curvy women. The ones that are on the market are for the younger curvy woman. In addition, jeans currently on the market are designed with the younger consumer in mind. Or, if they are designed for the mature woman, they are lackluster and frumpy, with no style at all, and they are not well-fitting. 
Diana is providing a solution for women over 40 who are stylish, curvy, and want well-fitting jeans without having to buy jeans meant for younger consumers. The benefit is that Diana is increasing these individuals' quality of life by supplying them with their need and want of stylish jeans for designed specifically for the curvy, over 40, and stylish crowd. Diana saw a gap in service and a need in the form of stylish, great-fitting jeans for the curvy woman who was over 40. Diana is providing a solution to this, her, target market, who do not currently have options for stylish jeans that fit just right. Her target audience is, of course, as mentioned numerous times, stylish, curvy women who are over 40. Next, we will look at Diana's consumer profile to understand how she is successful with creating content that is engaging and that piques interest. Now let's take a look at Diana's target consumer customer profile. Again, a consumer profile is a profile of your ideal consumer. It goes into their income, their daily life, what they like, what they don't like, how they like to receive information, what they do on the weekends, the problems they may be experiencing, the type of family structure they have, any type of issue they have. It's their characteristics and everything about that customer. And this is essential, and we'll talk about that a little bit after we go over Diana's target consumer profile. And remember, a target consumer profile is just a made-up person, but the characteristics in the profile is that of your ideal client. So for ta Diana's target consumer profile, the customer's name is Alexandria. We like to give the customer a name so it feels more realistic and so that you can dive deeper into their likes, dislikes, and all of the characteristics about them. So this customer's name is Alexandria. Alexandria is between the age of 40 and 50, very stylish and shop, shops luxury brands. Alexandria is a married female with older children and the children are in high school and college. Her household income, her household income is of 250,000 per year she owns an interior design studio. Okay, Alexandria. She shops online, but likes to be able to try on before buying if possible. She is a social butterfly and often entertains. She works out and is healthy, but is still very curvy. She listens to audiobooks and loves her HDTV design shows and indulges in some reality TV every now and again. She is all about family. She loves to look her best and loves wearing jeans and dressing up with jeans. Alexandria travels frequently. She is a believer that 40 is the new 20 and loves to look and feel her best. She has been frustrated that all stylish clothing found online is too naked. She can't find the luxury jeans she wants that still fit her curves and are stylish. She doesn't like to have to search too much to find the best styles. So for someone like Alexandria, she probably likes the one-stop shop. Once she finds a brand that she can stick to and, and be loyal to and that has many things that she's looking for, that's probably what she'll continue with. So she is the type of customer who will end up being a loyal, long-term customer once she finds what she likes. And Alexandria has no problem spending money on what she wants. She lives in Hamden, Connecticut. She uses all social, social media, but she prefer, prefers Zoom, FaceTime, text, or email. Next, we will talk about why all of the above matters. Now, all of the above characteristics for Alexandria matter because this teaches you how to engage with your consumer. This teaches you how to create content that speaks to her and, not, and also how to deliver that content. If you know that she prefers FaceTime, text, or email, you can actually have an email text, excuse me, your email or text group set up where you can text and email all of the deals and special coupons and all of those things. Or for consumers like Alexandria who like to spend and like to be um, in the know, you could also give them first access to things. That's what customers like Alexandria like to hear. They want to get a text or an email that says, hey, first access at new inventory coming in just for you. This also helps you understand how you should price your products. Pricing also comes down to understanding your customer as well as a, a, lot, of few, a lot of other things as well. But this also helps you 
be able to price accordingly and make sure that your pricing is in line with your target consumer and the cons customers who you are trying to attract. This also shows you how to grab her and engage with her. So when you are posting content online, take cues from your consumer profile. Go back and look at that consumer profile to understand, ha, huh, okay, I need to be posting at this time and I need to include these words. These words will trigger her interest and send her to the website. Does that all make sense to you? I hope so. Again, knowing everything there is to know about your target market is critical to piquing their interest, to creating content that is engaging for them. Remember, any marketing material, any content you create, all of your marketing strategies that you put into play are all supposed to be designed around your target consumer. And one way to understand your target consumer is to create a profile like the one we just went through. Okay, so now let's look at example number two. Now we are on example number two. Meet specialty bakery owner Tracy. Tracy is a baker and chef. She is also the mother of a six-year-old son who loves desserts but suffers from a gluten allergy. Over the past year, Tracy has had a hard time finding desserts and snacks that her son can eat without getting sick or having an allergic reaction. The gluten-free snacks that she is able to find are not very good, not tasty, and they are full of fillers. In addition, when she has been able to find some snacks, they are overly priced and not worth the price. She decides to open her own gluten-free dessert shop called Yummies That Don't Hurt Your Tummy. Isn't that a fantastic name that I came up for this example? Yep, that name is just a figment of my imagination. I made it up, but it is incredible. And that's how you tie in the creativity to your products and services. You see how I did that right there with this imaginary example? Her bakery is online and customers can order a variety of homemade gluten-free snacks and desserts that are shipped directly to their door. To increase sales, Tracy also sells a gluten-free dessert cookbook that she wrote. Tracy's business has done extremely well and she ships her desserts throughout the United States. She also does a pop-up shop every month which increases her sales as well as her business's visibility. The pop-ups also allows individuals who can't or don't want to pay shipping the opportunity to purchase her desserts in person. Her marketing strategies and her content used for marketing have both helped to increase her social media following. She has also implemented text marketing to make customers aware of pop-up dates, as well as a way to announce new dessert, desserts, which results in her selling out immediately. Let's take a look at how she does this. On the next slide, we will look at this shop owner's three W's. Now look, let's look at the three W's for example number two. The what, gluten-free delicious desserts and sweets. The who, parents with children who have gluten allergies and other individuals with gluten allergies who need access to a variety of delicious desserts that are gluten-free. Now, if you notice for this who, I said parents with children and not necessarily the children. Do you know why? This is because the children don't have the money to purchase the treats and sweets. So you want to target the parents who have the children because of course the parents have the money, the parents are making the decisions, and the parents are buying. Does that make sense to you? I hope so. Now the why. Lack of delicious, affordable, gluten-free dessert options for children and others with gluten allergies leaves these parents and other individuals without dessert options or having to choose bland, expensive desserts that are not satisfying or worth the price. The lack of delicious, affordable, gluten-free desserts often leaves parents having to try to make the treats themselves, having to pay high prices for less than stellar treats, or unfortunately, the children have to do without desserts and treats. Next, we will look at Tracy's consumer profile to understand how she's using this information to be successful with creating content that is engaging, that piques interest, and that increases her sales. Now let's take a look at Tracy's target consumer profile. This customer's name, and of course remember, these are fictitious customers. It, this customer's name is Raya. Raya is a single mother of three children of which two have gluten allergies but still like desserts and treats. 
She is an engineer and works from home and also owns a party planning business for children with special needs. She cooks family meals often due to her children's allergies, but she also pays for chef prepared meals that she can order and serve. She loves to throw her children theme parties every month. She has a hard time finding food that her children can eat, including desserts. She is tired of having to try to make gluten-free desserts herself, and she's also tired of paying very high prices to order them. She has a very busy schedule and doesn't have much assistance. She cooks her meals as far ahead as possible. She uses social media except for Twitter and TikTok. Her household income is $250,000 a year. She watches Netflix, Hulu, and Apple TV. She, often is, she, she is often on the go, so she usually communicates via text or email. She doesn't like having to talk on the phone if it isn't necessary. Busy woman. Lives in New Rochelle, New York. Has a hard time finding healthier dessert options that are gluten-free for her children, as well as for her clients of her party planning business. So you see, this consumer profile is a little bit different than the other, of course, because it's different companies, different products, different services. But as you can see, this consumer profile is a perfect fit, and this is the ideal customer for Tracy and her desserts. And again, why does the above matter when it comes to content creation? Well, it matters because this is the information you use to create content, to write the copy. Copy are just the words you use to persuade someone to do something when you are creating your marketing material. Knowing your customer, who they are, what they like, how they like to receive information, what problems are they solving, helps you better not only how you deliver your products and services, but it also helps you be creative in what you are going to say in your content, how you are going to create the content that speaks and stands out, and how you are going to engage and attract your customers to turn that interest into likes and sales. And as you may have guessed, for a company like the one Tracy owns, there is another customer base, and those are the adult individuals who have allergies, um, gluten allergies, but who are looking for treats and desserts. But her primary customer are the children. So of course, the parents of the children. And as you can see from this consumer profile, this individual fits right up the alley of who Tracy is trying to serve. So when Tracy is creating her content, when Tracy is posting about her desserts and treats, Raya is the type of customer Tracy has in mind. Now, after all of that, let's wrap it up. I told you this class was going to be very quick and to the point, and that's exactly what we did. Why did we go through all of that? Well, we did that so that you understand the foundation that you have to have in place before you try marketing, before you start buying ads on Facebook and Instagram, before you start spending hours and hours and hours on Canva and all types of other tools trying to create content. Before you do any of that, you have to know your three W's. And most importantly for marketing and creating content, you have to know and understand your target market and target audience. You have to know who you're speaking to, who you're selling to, what they like, what they don't like, what their needs are, what their challenges are, what's available to them on the market, what's not available to them on the market, how they like to receive their information. All of these things are necessary in order for you to create the content and properly convey the message so that you pique interest, so that they hear you, and so that they start following, listening, and buying from you. So we went through all of that to get here so you understand exactly what you need to know in order to create the proper content. I hope this training helped you understand the foundation necessary. I hope this training helped you identify your target market, help you create a consumer profile, and understand how all of that works together to make sure that your business is not only successful, but is resilient and can bring in increasing revenue for years to come. And in order to do that, I tell people, you must be able to create content that is engaging and content that can help you convert interest, likes, or whatever into sales and long-term loyal customers, okay?
So thank you for joining me. And thank you so much for watching. You can reach me on social media. I'm on Facebook under Life with Tamova. I'm on Instagram under MuseU84, as well as my personal Instagram, Tamova Addles. And of course, you can always go to my website, www.muse84.com. And as mentioned at the beginning of this training and class, this is a Muse84 training and class, and all rights are reserved. No parts of any of these documents, audio, or visuals may be reproduced or shared without expressed written consent from me, Timova Adels of Muse84. Thank you.